Welcome to the very first episode of The Bucket List, where I just talk about some of my favorite games and franchises, and talk about ones that I want to try out. In today's episode, we're covering Super Mario Bros., which was released in the Famicom in 1985. Super Mario Bros. is one of the most legendary games of This game is actually one of the first games I have ever played, and I'm very happy that it was. But anyways, this game is legendary, and it deserves it for being so good as the first game in the Mario series. So let's talk about the story. It's the usual for Mario games. Basically, Princess Peach is taken away by Bowser, and Mario now has to go through eight different worlds in order to save the princess. I pretty much just summed up the entire game with that sentence. I have basically nothing else to say, and if you want more information, well, it's in another castle. Super Mario Bros. was a launch title for the NES and also, weirdly enough, came bundled together with Duck Hunt and the NES Zapper. The only way to get that specific cartridge was to buy an NES at the time, but everyone had to. In fact, it sold over 58 million copies worldwide. Now that's a lot of paper if I do say so myself. So let's see what systems it's on since it's sold so well. For starters, it had an arcade release, its original NES release, Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, which which is a remake of it on the Game Boy Color, a remake on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in Super Mario All-Stars. There was also that same package released with Super Mario World this time, an arcade you can have in the Japanese release of Animal Crossing, which was on the Nintendo 64, an arcade you can have in the American release of Animal Crossing, which was on the GameCube, a playable demo of the game in Super Smash Bros. Brawl on Wii, a PC port of the same game, a re-release of Super Battery of All-Stars on Wii, a playable demo in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, a virtual console version on 3DS, Wii U, and Wii, a Game & Watch release for Mario 35th Anniversary, and a Nintendo Switch online virtual console version of the original Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario All-Stars. Do you think we have enough Super Mario Bros? The gameplay is simple. Beat the level. That's it. That's a good summary of my life goals. But unlike the sound design of my voice, the sound design for the game at the time was really good. Everyone, and I mean everyone, has heard the ground theme before. Personally though, I was always a fan of the underground theme. It's such a banger, but I'm not relevant, so it doesn't matter is a 2D platformer, and I have never beat fully funny enough. This game has 8 worlds and 4 levels in each, and in a few levels there is something called the Warp Zone, where you can go to other worlds and skip levels, which is really neat. The most famous being level 1-2, where it's about the warp pipe at the end of the level. That's a great metaphor to explain my love life. Now let's talk about one of the coolest mechanics in any Mario game, the power-ups. There is the Super Mushroom, where Mario can take an extra hit, and he's bigger. There is also the Fire Flower, which lets Mario take an extra hit, and he's bigger. But this time, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> yeah, he, he's white. Oh yeah, and he can also shoot fireballs that kill enemies or something like that, but I don't know too much about it myself. There's also the Superstar, which lets Mario be invincible for, like, 20 to 30 seconds, and he kills enemies in one hit. Oh yeah! Enemies! There is the Goomba that we all know and love, and you kill him by jumping on his head. There is the Koopa Troopa, in which they can be red or green in this game, and you can jump on his head, and he goes into a shell, where you can kick it, and the shell goes across the floor. And there are more enemies to talk about, but I'm too lazy to talk about them. The main enemy that we like to talk about always is Bowser himself, or in this game, King Koopa. Basically, he's on the fourth level of each world, and he's the boss there. He can spit fire to a fuck ton of hammers and jump. You can either kill him or jump over him and hit the axe, break the bridge, and make Bowser fall uh, to the death. Yep. When you end any other level, you touch a flagpole and Mario drops down and the flag rises. And everyone knows this information, why the fuck am I talking about it? Those are some seriously sad last words to end the episode. And you know, sad backwards is das, and that's not a good way to end the video, so I'll just tell you my thoughts on the game. 
If you couldn't tell, I love this buggy mess. And it is a game I love going back to. Next episode though, I want to cover Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, which is a game I don't like going back to. I'm going to try and knock out each mainline Mario game in the series, and then cover something like Zelda or Sonic. And yeah, that's about all I have to talk about for Super Mario Bros. Until the next time, I'm the EG, and this is the Bucket List.